but I had people rate themselves on their leadership skills, both at work and at home. And I found this really interesting. I had actually everybody in the, in the chat function, um, according to what I call the five leadership EQ skills, I had them actually rate themselves. How would you rate your leadership skills and communication at work? And then how would you rate your communication skills actually at home? And what was fascinating is when I actually saw the data starting to come up for most people, I'd say over 80%, they were rating their professional skills pretty good, their personal leadership skills were actually really bad. And it's interesting that we can, even in the you know, with the chair concept, we can sit in the middle chair maybe at work, but when we get home, we kind of all of a sudden we move to the right chair or we move to the left chair. And I think that's really an interesting thing is that leadership really is an ongoing journey. We never really stop because we, we're always honing those skills. We're always kind of improving those skills. Um, and so, you know, it's something, you know, for all of your listeners to really think about, like really being intentional, being intentional. Like, I want to be a great leader who sits in the middle chair. I want to inspire other people around me. And I want to inspire my kids at home as well. And realizing that this is really in all parts of our life, not just work. Hello and welcome to Say Hi to the Future, a podcast aimed at highlighting the human side of human ingenuity, clever, inventive, and original thinking. My name is Ken Tenser, curator of Say Hi to the Future and CEO of Spiderworks, a leading business consultancy for mid-market organizations and entrepreneurs globally. With me today is Dr. Karen Gordon, CEO of DK Leadership, a global leadership coaching company whose purpose is developing great leaders at work and at home. Her unique ability is simplifying research in a passionate and practical way. In 2018, Dr. Karen co-created SI, Success Intelligence, which includes live online masterclasses and courses for managers, making leadership development inspiring and simple. SI is now used by thousands of global leaders across many different industries. In 2021, Dr. Karen was nominated for the 29th annual RBC Canadian Women Entrepreneur Award. Like this video if you enjoy our show and subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment with who you want to see us interview next. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you enjoy the show. Okay, Dr. Karen, welcome to say hi to the future. Thank you, Ken. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, thank you. You know, this show for me, it's, it's about passion and savage curiosity. And, and I think that that's what brings out the best in us. And when I was reading a little bit about your background and bio, there's something that really struck me as important or interesting. And that was, um, you know, developing great leaders at work and home. That sort of dichotomy. So how do you do that? Oh, Ken, that's a good question. So a little background about myself, my doctorate's in marriage and family. So I'm actually a registered therapist. I still practice with families one day a week and the other four days um, I work with organizations, but I did a doctorate in marriage and family. I started my first practice when I was 22 years old after I graduated and I started working with teenagers. I was very young at the time. So I ended up focusing and specializing with teenagers for the first 10 years of my, uh, of my business. And then um, in Canada, I was started becoming very popular with this topic because I became a specialist really around millennials and how millennials think. And so mm -hmm. I started doing national speaking tours and speaking at all kinds of conferences. And then a lot of organizations and companies and CEOs of, you know, large companies, they said, Karen, could you transfer the knowledge you had from families into the workplace? Because they were at that time hiring millennials and they didn't really understand how to effectively manage and lead them. And so that's what I did 15 years ago, expanded our work. So now we work with companies all around the world on management. And one of the things that I really learned very quickly, Ken, is that the leadership skills that I was teaching to managers to successfully manage their teams were exactly the same things I was teaching to teenagers in high schools when I first started. And I realized that leadership, you know, the fundamental leadership, emotional intelligence skills that really develop, make great leaders that I talk about in my, my, my new book, The Three Chairs, How Great Leaders uh, Drive Communication, Performance, and Engagement. That really is the heart of it, is that great leadership are a set of skills that you need to learn, all of us need to learn, that we can apply both to our work life and our home life. It's not like it's a, a separate set of skills. It's like one set, of, uh, one set of skills in a toolkit that are learned. You know, these are learned skills. It's not genetic, um, and which is, I think, actually really exciting. And when you talk about learned skills and you talk about leadership, I mean, you, you've been writing this book, obviously, during the pandemic, or at least a good part of it during that. 
how is leadership changing? And especially now that work and home is it's, it's melding almost. So work, what's really interesting, and we started seeing the trend of this certainly even before COVID where the workplace is actually starting to change. I saw this when I was working with the multi-generations in, in different organizations where you know, the younger generations wanted more of a family culture. They wanted more balance. They wanted more feedback from their managers. Um, and then what happened with COVID, what I found is really interesting in the workplace, it became like a bit of a reset button. You know, all of a sudden people started really rethinking going, hang on a second. It's almost like a bit of a workplace uh, crisis. And a, a lot of people were like, is this how I want to live my life? You know, it, am I really wanting to do that two hour drive every day? Do I really want to work for this company? Do I really want to work for this boss? And what I found is that a lot of people started rethinking their purpose. And so that's why we're seeing people quit their job, moving different cities, uh, have that kind of great resignation. And so, you know, one of the concepts I talk about in my book is around, you know, great leaders are very tuned into their sense of purpose and their value system, and they will make decisions, decisions according to those values. It's one of the, the secret sauces of why are some people happy and when some people are not. And the, the solution to it is that people that are great leaders, they know what they want in their values and they will make decisions aligned to those values. And so I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing people starting to make uh, some pretty bold and brave decisions as it relates to work at home. Well, and I think that really impacts, and, and I see with our clients, I mean, it, it impacts who we are as, as, as owners, who we are as entrepreneurs, who we are as, as, as CEOs of companies. I mean, it's almost like... <laughs> The, the pandemic has created this almost shift, almost like the, the, the greatest thing has happened to, to, to employees or team members ever, because we get to be or choose who we want to be now more so than I think, you know, in my 30 plus years of working. Yeah. And I think part of it, again, when we think about leadership, emotional intelligence, and again, this is the heart of kind of the, 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 the book is that people have to kind of make choices. You know, one of the things that, you know, people with low EQ is that they think that life happens to them, right? That they have right. no choice. It's like, I'm a victim of my circumstance. I can't do anything different. And one of the things I really emphasize about great leadership, whether or not we're 15 or we're 50, is realizing that life is about choices, that we will have external circumstances that will, you know, either help us or hinder us, but how we respond to those circumstances is our choice. And so what COVID was, was an external circumstance. It was a very stressful circumstance, but how we responded to it, you know, we, I saw some, I'm sure you did too as well. I saw some people like take COVID and like just run with it and kind of created this incredible opportunity of taking classes online that they've never done before, spending more time with their family, trying to really leverage in a very difficult circumstance, how they could kind of make the most of it. And then I saw other people where, you know, their anxiety went through the roof. They like literally kind of hit rock bottom. And so you have the same external circumstance and depending on per a person's situation, their response to that circumstance was actually pretty powerful. No, absolutely. And it's funny because you talk about how some people ran with it. And, and I think about millennials. I think I, I have uh, three children in their twenties and three stepchildren in their twenties. Oh wow! Um, and and I I, I wish I, you have six millennials in your home, Ken. Oh, wow! No, not in my home. Oh, not in your home. Okay, <laughs> correction. All right. Not in not in my home, but I do. And 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 yes, I wish I had seen your book <laughs> and said, read some of your work prior on on that. But what I find is, you know, I I love millennials and I love the way that they they sort of work with the world or, 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 or communicate with the world. And I say that because they really have gotten a knock as a generation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and for me, they, they grew up connected. Um, mm -hmm. They were able to see and, and speak to people anywhere in the world on any topic at any time. And, and frankly, that is a skill set that my generation did not have. We did not have the technology to do it. And, and, you know, for leadership today and, and talking about values and passions and purpose, boy, the world has really opened up to that. They really have. And you know what? It's interesting because the sense around purpose and value, you know, for years, companies did like mission statements and values, but they were kind of like something that a little bit in like a textbook and somebody's like on some document that nobody actually ever reads and therefore has no power. What this generation has done is it's like just taken that concept and just put a big microphone kind of against it. And and it's very powerful because, you know, when you think about great leaders and when I think about leadership, I don't think about a title. I think about a mindset. 
you know, the, the right. book, The Three Chairs, is really about the three types of leaders. Uh, you know, are you an insecure leader on the left chair? Are you an arrogant leader on the right chair? Or are you a confident, great leader in the middle chair? And the whole book is around the science of taking all the data that you can actually, once a person kind of understands those three mindsets, those three different attitudes, you can actually, with a fairly good prediction, guess on how a person's going to make decisions in their life. How are they going to set goals? Who are they going to choose as their dating partner? How are they going to take risks? How are they going to set boundaries? All based on those kind of mindsets. And so, you know, the whole thing around purpose again that that middle chair leader they know what their purpose are their values their goals they they take action they step on the gas and you can start developing those skills at a very young age i talk about in the book how my leadership journey started in grade 8 when i was told by a clinical psychologist that i had a learning disability and would be lucky to finish high school and i talk about that in the first chapter because that's when my journey started and so you know everybody has situations obstacles barriers we all have it just different ones and so if we can kind of start teaching those leadership skills early uh, to our children, our teenagers, it will help to prepare them for the workforce so that managers don't have to try to be teaching it to them when they actually hit the workforce. Right. How do you find that right balance? I mean, you're talking about the middle, um, you're talking about management, you're talking about the, the three chairs in the middle, but I mean, as a CEO and a leader for, for many years, I mean, there's a certain part of insecurity that actually I think heightens who you are and how you see the world. And on the other side, you know, you, you, you can't be arrogant, but there's a, there's a, certainly as an entrepreneur, there's an audacity sure. um, in who we are and what we do. So how do you, how do you hone that and find that, that proper balance in the middle? So it's a great question. So I want everybody listening and watching to think about, well, hold up the book, just so you can have a visual because visuals are really powerful. So here's the book and here are the three different mindsets. And this is all built based on science. Okay. This is it. So I came up with the concept of it. I basically took all the data and I simplified it, but it's all based on research. So I'm going to go through the three attitudes real quick. And I want everybody to think to themselves, where are you sitting the majority of the time? Okay. Where are you sitting the majority of the time? And then how does that affect your everyday? How does that affect you at work and actually at home? So left here, you've got the insecure person. That's the person that's really tough on themselves. They put themselves down. Um, you know, if somebody gives them a compliment, they're like, oh, you know what? You're just saying that they kind of put themselves down. They're tough. Okay. They're really tough on themselves. The one on the right is the arrogant leader. They're cocky. They're arrogant. They're full of themselves. They will tell you where to go and they really don't care what you think. <laughs> then you've got this middle chair leader and the middle chair leader, that confident leader is the person who they have a sense of confidence. And to your point, Ken, they have a sense of confidence. They know what they want. They're going to go after it. They're going to take those initiatives. But the other thing about it is that they're very open to feedback. This person over here is not open to feedback. This middle right. person is open to feedback. They're open to feedback because the difference, the big difference between these two chairs of, to your point is humility. So that middle chair leader is realizes I know a lot, but I don't know everything. So I'm going to surround myself with people that know more than I do. I'm going to be asking for feedback and I'm going to be trying to do something with that feedback. The person over here, very, a lot of times feedback fragile. They're going to avoid conflict at a lot of times. And so when, once you start kind of understanding those three different attitudes, you can kind of go through the book. You can see, okay, if I'm sitting in the left chair, how does that affect my goal setting? If I'm sitting in the right chair, who am I actually attracted to as a partner? I mean, when you start kind of getting into it, it's fascinating on how it affects how these three mindsets affect decision-making because life is all about making decisions. So to your point, when you see a lot of entrepreneurs that are sitting in that middle chair, the great ones are the ones that they go after it, but they're open to feedback and, um, and they're, and they're human, they're humble. There's a, there, there's a, I think that would probably be right. the most, one of the most significant different, uh, di uh, differentiators between certainly the, the different, uh, the different mindsets. And, there you go. And you just had a little lesson, Ken, you just had a lesson. That is, that is awesome. We, we, I think all of us need that. And, and I appreciate that. And, you, you know, it, it does, it does play off of one thing that I say quite a bit when I speak about innovation and, and ingenuity. And you know, I, I tell business leaders to look at athletes, because when they're on the podium, you know, behind them is, is their coach. Um, right. It's, it's their psychologist or sports yeah. psychologist. They're, yeah whoever keeps them, them fit and training and, and, and you know, developing the, the proper nutrition, they are used to being part of a team. And as business leaders, especially again, those of us in my generation of, of 50 plus, we were taught that we were supposed to have the answers. Right. Um, we were supposed to be the go-to. And how do we take that first step to saying, it's, it's okay to have a team. In fact, you really need one and, and you don't need to have the answers all the time. 
I think it's exactly what you're saying. It's really adopting this new mindset on the growth mindset, the humble mindset. It's that it's realizing that the greatest leaders, and we can all think of somebody who is probably a great leader who's sitting in that middle chair, is the person that says, I know a lot, but I don't know everything. Nobody can. It's an unrealistic expectation to think that somehow we should kind of have it all figured out. So when I think about the greatest leaders in my life, both personally and professionally, these are people that are sitting in the middle chair, that they they surround themselves with coaches, with mentors, with colleagues that will challenge them. We don't want to be surrounding ourselves with all the people that are going to be saying yes to us all the time. We want, you know, the great leaders intentionally ask for feedback so that they can actually really grow as a person. And I think that's a really healthy mindset. That, that's the growth mindset. Um, and, you know, when I do training, whether it's, you know, to management teams yesterday, we, we just finished a six week program on developing great managers in our company. And we had come, uh, we had people in seven different countries and we were talking about what great leaders do, what great managers do. And what was really interesting in this particular interactive is all virtual. Uh, but I had people rate themselves on their leadership skills both at work and at home. And I found this really interesting. I had actually everybody in the, in the chat function, um, according to what I call the five leadership EQ skills, I had them actually rate themselves. How would you rate your leadership skills and communication at work? And then how would you rate your communication skills actually at home? And what was fascinating is when I actually saw the data starting to come up, for most people, I'd say over 80%, they were rating their professional skills pretty good. Their personal leadership skills were actually really bad. And it's interesting that we can... Even in the, you know, with the chair concept, we can sit in the middle chair, maybe at work, but when we get home, we kind of, all of a sudden we move to the right chair or we move to the left chair. And I think that's really an interesting thing is that leadership really is an ongoing journey. We never really stop. We, cause we're always honing those skills. We're always kind of improving those skills. Um, and so, you know, it's something, you know, for all of your listeners to really think about, like really being intentional, being intentional. Like, I want to be a great leader who sits in the middle chair. I want to inspire other people around me and I want to inspire my kids at home as well. And realizing that this is really in all parts of our life, not just work. Right. And, and you said something there about, you know, con- continuous or ongoing learning. And one of the things that, you know, again, as, I, as we talk about here is savage curiosity. And within, within our company, within my company, I've always pushed people to, to take, you know, learning or, or, or development of, of different skills or programs every year. And mm. some of them, some of them will go, you know, to pottery. It doesn't have to be about business. Oh, wow. It doesn't have to be about what we're in. No. And, and people have always said, well, how does that help your business? Why are you paying for that? I said, because it's freeing because they're learning a different skill because they're seeing the world through a different lens. And to me, what I'm hearing with the three chairs in leadership is that you need to understand how to open those different lenses. Oh, Ken, I love the fact that you pay for that for your, for your team. That is so amazing. <laughs> so what that ties into is one of the concepts I talk about in the book is how to engage in terms of around engagement and retention. And so what I did is I looked at all the different data and the research around what are those organizations that have incredible engagement and retention? What about teams and what about actually individuals? And I realized that there was actually six, what I call the six piece of engagement. They're kind of like six different areas of a person's life when they're fully engaged, they're fully energized, they're fully happy and, and studying those kind of great leaders in those great organizations. And one of them is purpose. The other one is professional growth. The other one is play and uh, uh, personal relationships. You've got, you know, physical health. So there's different categories. And one of the things I do is I get individuals, but also teams to start mapping out the goals that they actually want to do for all six. And so what I'm hearing from you is that that's actually essentially with what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your people to say, listen, you are a holistic person. You're not a one dimensional person. And we want to support you to do be about developing holistically. I mean, talk about a great place to work. That's exactly the kind of mindset of a, of a great workplace uh, environment that we're certainly encouraging in the book. Oh, thank you for that. I, I've enjoyed it for a number of years. So, yeah, but, um, and, it, and it's energizing, right? When you're talking about yeah. it, obviously you have people kind of come back and they're energized because they like made a, made a bowl or made a cup and somebody else is taking coding. And all of a sudden what happens, and that's the power around the six Ps, is that when you start tapping into people's energy, emotional energy, all of a sudden it kind of starts fueling because emotional energy is contagious. So when you have right. somebody who is energized and passionate, it just fuels this, this, in, 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 so that, so that could be the short answer when people kind of question it, but why you're paying Perfect. for pottery. Yeah. <laughs> it's emotional energy. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Can, can we turn the clock back a few years? Um, you, you developed something called SI or success intelligence and one, I'd love to hear a little bit more about it. And the other thing, I, I guess my question is, 
And it goes to great leaders is how do you know when you're successful? Okay, well, the, okay, so the short answer is success is, and we call it success intelligence because um, success is very personalized. So how I define success will be very, very different than how you su define success. And so what we did with the program is we basically uh, started to get people to identify what does success look like to you? I want you to define it according okay. to the six piece of engagement. That's kind of like the end goal, right? Um, right. So whether or not somebody wants to do a marathon or like be married or have kids or save X amount or have an MBA or whatever those kind of goals are that they have. So that's kind of like the end goal, but then how do they get there? So you have the what and the how. So right. success is all based on the six piece of engagement, but the how is your emotional intelligence. Yeah, you need that kind of emotional intelligence to kind of help drive that because somebody might say, I want to have an MBA, but then they don't do anything. So they have this goal, but they're stuck because their emotional intelligence, they're sitting in that left chair, that right chair, they're not moving. They're blaming everything on everybody else or they're not prioritizing or they're not setting boundaries, right? So, so what happens is we can have these, these definitions of success, but if we have not developed our emotional intelligence, we're kind of in limbo land. So uh, so in, in answer to, you know, your first question was around what exactly is success intelligence. So I was doing some training in California, an amazing company, fast growing uh, real estate company, an invest, investing company. And I was doing an all day management training and the head of HR, she said to me, this is about three and a half years ago. She said, Karen, our team loves you. There's about hundred people, but we're in different states and we don't want to have just like a day training. Um, we, we want something ongoing. So what could you do that's actually online or virtual? And I had already been thinking that I wanted to start kind of create something. So that was a bit of my push, my catalyst. And so together with, with in addition to a couple of Canadian companies, we, we created a beta on, could we develop some kind of an online leadership coaching program to really train people of those emotional intelligence skills to drive that right. success? And so we did the first year, we got tons of feedback. Um, and then we actually created and kind of the launch the second year. So now we've been doing it for three years. Um, we're in seven countries, 4,000 people are now licensing our program. And it's been an incredible journey. We work with all kinds of amazing organizations. And essentially with what it is, it is, uh, think of it like TED Talks, TED Talk meets Netflix. So it's like a platform. You have a whole bunch of different like training modules on different emotional intelligence skills. How do you give feedback? How do you receive feedback? How do you deal with tricky people? But they're only 10 to 12 minutes. And that's kind of the, okay. the, the secret to it because people don't have more capacity than that. But then we also have live online classes that I lead so that people can watch the online ones, but then they can kind of come to our live master classes. So they have that interaction because I really do find with online training, it's great to have it there for a 24 seven you know, uh, consumption, but people really do want access to their teacher. They want to get to know their teachers. Right. So we have this live online master classes, And then we also have in addition courses that are part of it because a lot of our organizations that we work with, they want things specifically for managers. So they want specifically things for um, uh, their emerging leaders or their senior leaders. So we have like six week track programs to really help um, uh, to help different types of leaders. And the biggest thing is that we try to make it really affordable so that everybody can learn the skills at the same time. Because one of the things that I found in this space is that too often, you know, a manager is about to get promoted and they, then they're shipping them off for a three-day program. Well, if that manager now leaves, you know, it's it, from a cultural perspective, it just doesn't work. So if we can make something that's really affordable so that everybody within an organization can be receiving the same training, that's what kind of makes things electric. And so that's how we developed it. So, you know, entire companies can actually do it for their employees. And so it's been so much fun and just keeps evolving. And, you know, to your point about what you were saying at the earlier, about the family, we created this on teaching amazing leadership skills and tools for businesses. And then when COVID came, a lot of our business leaders saying, Karen, I'm at home with my kids, help, but this content's amazing. Can you actually transfer it more to the family? I said, absolutely. That's where I actually started. So we started actually creating modules and training specifically on how do you teach this to preteens and teenagers. Um, and our business leaders just love that. And so, so I think we're going to start building out that family side because a lot of leaders want to be able to apply to both parts of their life, right? We're, we're multi-layered, you know, multi-layered, um, you know, not, uh, not one layered, uh, one focus. So it's been really fun. No, it, it sounds it. And, you know, it's very hard to find a, a silver lining to a pandemic, but I think as you talk about what you're doing and, 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 I think we've learned a lot about work-life balance. I think we've learned a lot about who we are. And I think we've learned that we learn and take in information in different ways. And, and what I'm hearing from you is, is just wonderful because you, you've you pre-thought that hybrid. So I, I think that's an incredible place to be. 
you're you're about what three four days out from the official launch of the three chairs so what's uh, yeah. my, oh, why it's... why is this as we wrap up karen why is this book indispensable this book is indispensable because to me this is going to really become the foundational tool uh, the, the tool uh, well it's a book but a kind of a toolkit of what makes a great leader. And um, I'm recommending it for every age group, but specifically for business leaders, emerging leaders, people in their twenties. Uh, you know, just like I would say, Patrick Lencioni's book is the book for teams, you know, the, the five right. essentials of team. That's a great book for teams. This book is really built on for individuals. How do we develop ourselves as a great leader? Because if we can start developing this as a great leader, as a teenager, then we're going to be much better equipped for when we actually enter the workforce. And, you know, when we see mental health crisis that are actually happening right. um, and things are so dismal in many ways, this book is really about hope around how all of us can really learn to sit in that middle chair and feel really excited uh, and energized for our future, know kind of what success looks like for us, but then have the tools and the toolkit to actually help to drive that. So I feel like this is going to really be that kind of foundational leadership book that everybody needs to read in their 20s before they hit that workforce to properly equip themselves uh, to have a successful life and successful career. Thank you so much, Dick. Dr. Karen Gordon, your new book, The Three Chairs, is coming out on the 31st. It was an absolute pleasure having you on today and uh, best of success with this. Thank you so much, Ken. Take care.